So get this, Joe Biden repeatedly refuses to comment on the Trump indictments. He insists that he has an entirely independent DOJ. Do you remember this? Mr. President, what do you say to Americans to convince them that they should trust the independence and fairness of the Justice Department when your predecessor, Donald Trump, repeatedly attacks it? Because you notice, I have never once, not one single time, suggested to the Justice Department what they should do or not do relative to bringing a charge or not bringing a charge. I'm honest. I'm honest. I mean, that was a little creepy, but not so quick. An April New York Times article titled Biden's response to Trump's indictment, four ways to say no comment. He's really good at that, isn't he? Well, they have this passage buried 14 paragraphs down. They always bury the really big news way deep down, as you'll notice here. Here's the quote. He does have opinions, he being Joe Biden. In the past, Mr. Biden privately told his close circle of advisors that Mr. Trump posed a threat to democracy, and here's the big point, and he should be prosecuted for his role in the events of January 6th. He also told confident, co confidants that he wanted Attorney General Merrick B. Garland to stop acting like a ponderous judge and to take decisive action. That is stunning. Biden privately told aides that Trump should be prosecuted for January 6th, and he wanted Merrick Garland to take decisive action? That is an explosive allegation buried in the New York Times. The New York Times reporters, they are quick to brag when their reporting is confirmed by a Jack Smith indictment. All you gotta do is go look at their Twitter feeds. Jonathan Swan, he said this, a striking amount of the Jack Smith indictment is material Maggie and other colleagues first reported. And Maggie Haberman, here she is. Emails from this story Luke and I did over a year ago on page 24 of the indictment. They love to brag. But why are they radio silent about their own reporting that Joe Biden wanted to see a January 6th indictment of his chief political rival? Why aren't they following up on this? And where is the press? Has Corrine Jean-Pierre been asked about this? Nope. Has Joe Biden? No, he hasn't. Where is the so-called adversarial press pursuing this explosive lead? They aren't doing it. Joining us now is Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz, the author of the Biden malaise Fox News contributor Kimberly Strassel. Kimberly, this reporting is from Katie Rogers. I, she was a reporter I worked with briefly when I was on the Trump campaign. She's a credible reporter. She cites two sources familiar with the conversation that say Biden privately told aides Trump should be prosecuted and that he wanted Garland to take decisive action. What do you make of that? Well, this is how it works in Washington, right? I mean, Biden was never going to produce a memo and send it to the Department of Justice outlining his wishes. Nobody does that. They all want plausible deniability when it comes to sending orders to DOJ. Uh, but instead, he tells a close confident, uh, a close circle of confidence, and then those confidants tell others, and that message gets to Merrick Garland. And it's why, by the way, too, I'm sure Jack Smith is going to be asked at some point, you know, did Merrick Garlic, did Merrick Garland tell you? to do this or not do this? Did you talk to the president? He didn't need to. This has been broadcast from day one. And, and even if Biden never, never said prosecute him, he's given numerous speeches where he's talked about how uh, Donald Trump is a threat to the country. He's made very clear how he feels about this. And everybody's now doing the wishes of the boss. Greg, when you look at this, just as an average American citizen, you see two Trump indictments from the DOJ, you see no investigation of the FD-1023, the cushy Hunter plea deal, and then you ask, where's Robert Hur? If you don't know his name, I, I don't, don't you know, blame you for that. He's the guy looking into the Biden docs. Jonathan Turley said his face belongs on a milk carton at this point. How can you not believe that there's a two-tier justice system? Well, there absolutely is, and the American public knows it, which is why after the indictments, Trump's ratings go up and the money begins to flow in on donations. Look, Joe Biden doesn't have to direct Merrick Garland and his DOJ prosecutors to indict his political opponent. The people running the department were picked by Joe Biden, so they're doing his bidding, happily so. And Garland selected Jack Smith as special counsel because he has a notorious track record of bringing politically motivated prosecutions by bastardizing the law. And the January 6th indictment is such an example. 
you know, for the first time in American jurisprudence, Smith is making it a crime for a politician to utter false claims and act on those claims in a government function to wit an election. Uh, if that's the new legal standard, just about everybody in Washington belongs behind bars. Hillary Clinton, you'll recall, invented and funded the collusion lie, conspired with others to defraud the FBI with a phony dossier to smear Trump and steal the election. But, you know, that's perfectly OK. No indictment because Hillary is a Democrat. The political landscape is littered with government actions, as Kimberly pointed out in her column, based on false claims or lies, including Joe Biden. Looking at the Devin Archer testimony, Jason, I, there's these 20 plus phone calls that Joe Biden was a part of. But what's illustrative to me and most interesting in the Devin Archer testimony is this Dubai incident, because it's illustrative of these 20 calls. They're in Dubai. They're at the Four Seasons. This is Hunter and the head of Burisma. And they're having drinks together. And then all of a sudden, you have the head of Burisma saying, get on the phone with DC. Hunter puts his dad on speakerphone. Devin Archer wasn't privy to that conversation. But five days later, after much pressure has been put on to get Victor Shokin out the door, the prosecutor looking into Burisma, Joe Biden shows up in Ukraine and says it's not enough to set up a new anti-corruption bureau and establish special prosecutors. The office of the general prosecutor, Victor Shokin, desperately needs reform. Coincidence? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, what we learned from the testimony is that the proof of concept was the idea that Joe Biden via Hunter Biden and, and, and his minions that were around him, that they could move the levers of power. And they did it. They did it in Ukraine. They wanted that prosecutor gone. And guess what? He was gone. In Romania, they tried to overturn um, and use the Department of Justice to lean on the Romanians to get rid of uh, a conviction. And you know what they got? It didn't actually work, but they tried through Louis Free. And you know what the Bidens got? $100,000 went into the bank account of Joe Biden's grandchildren for doing what? for trying to make that happen. In Mexico, you had the same type of thing happen where Hunter Biden's saying, I'm with my dad. And guess what? We're flying to Mexico City on Air Force Two. I'm bringing Jeff Cooper, the business partner of Hunter Biden on Air Force Two to Mexico City to get a deal done. And you have the example after example after example when Joe Biden actually asks to get something done, it does get done. And so when Joe Biden actually goes and says, I never had a conversation with anybody at the Department of Justice about Hunter Biden, but I can tell you this, he's never done anything wrong. He's the smartest person on the planet and he's never done anything wrong. That was signal to the Department of Justice. You better darn well make sure that he doesn't go to jail. That's the signal. That's the way it's done. That's the signal. And Kim, final question. We only have a little bit of time here. Are you surprised that the New York Times framing of all that we learn was it has long been known that the elder Biden at times interacted with his son's business partners? It has long been known, apparently. You know, they, they missed the storyline this week. Here's the important thing. Let's just understand, like, put aside whether or not there's some smoking gun in the end about whether or not Joe Biden profited off of Hunter's business. The important thing we learned this week from Devin Archer is that whenever Joe, whenever Hunter Biden wanted to show that he had access to Washington, his dad willingly got on the phone. He came to the meetings, and it was all designed to help Hunter suggest he had access to the wheels of power. That was aiding Hunter in his business, and Joe knew exactly what he was doing in that regard. That is, in and of itself, a huge problem, not something that any other member of Congress or other prior president would be proud to acknowledge that they had done. Um, this was selling the Biden family brand, and it worked. It helped Burisma. And that alone, even that itself, is a big deal. Kim, Greg, Jason, thanks. Enjoy your Friday night.